Hello. Hi, everyone. I see a bunch of people in the chat already. Hi, Mrs. Italian Lady. How are you? I'm so glad you're enjoying the, I don't know if you're on the website or the YouTube channel, but I'm so glad. Hi, Juliet. How are you? Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that you made the Salisbury steak. I love that recipe. I didn't think I was going to like it. I really did though. I'm glad you did too. Hi, Mary. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Larry. Good to see you again. Larry made something delicious. Mushrooms and rice with chicken thighs in the speedy tonight. Lemon cake baked in the Ninja countertop oven. Sounds delicious. Um, I'm going to go through here. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Hi, Juliet. Did I already say that? Hi, Tracy. <laughs> hi, Tracy. <laughs> um, hi, Carol. Hi, Jane. Hi, Annie. Um, it, well, it's my vacation week tomorrow. Okay, so I leave tomorrow morning. Hey, John. Good morning. Um, and Juliet, I'll try. Well, Terry, I'll try to remember that. I, I might not, though. My memory's not that good. Hi, Lucy. Well, it's just me tonight, Lucy. It is um, Lucy saying that she she thought that I might not be airing tonight, but so glad they are. This is the Q and a, not the tasty Tuesday where I cook. This is where we just kind of chat about cooking things. And I try to answer some questions and stuff like that. Jeff's at work and he works every other Tuesday, whether it's day shift or night shift. So, um, he could not, you know, he can't be here. So we don't do the tasty Tuesday because that camera stuff is just too much. I can't cook and do the cameras at the same time. All right. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Jolene. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Meredith. Hi, Michelle. I haven't left yet, John. I leave tomorrow. John said, I hope you had a, a great trip. Well, I'm, I haven't left. I, I'm leaving tomorrow. Um, I'm sorry. Um, okay. I'm sorry about that. Hi, Wayne. How are you? Hi, Colleen. How are you? Uh, no, I don't mind at all. In fact, I'm going to talk about that tonight. Um, Hi, Francis. Hi, Francis. Two right in a row. Um, hi, Lisa. Hi, Alaska Family Kitchen. Hi, Kimberly. Let me make sure I have on the right chat here. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, I think. Oh, wait a minute. You know what I have to do? I have to go to YouTube real quick. So while I'm doing that, um, if you guys have any questions, just drop them in the drop them in the um question box i'm gonna say i have to go into youtube and oops don't want to do that youtube defaults to top chat instead of live chat and what that means is that i don't see all the comments so if i didn't say hi to you it's because i didn't see it but i have just switched it um over and hey Brittany. All right. Yeah. First of all, let's all congratulate Brittany a little bit early because she's getting married on Saturday. That's why Jeff and I are leaving tomorrow. We are heading out to Arizona to uh, attend her wedding. I was so honored to be invited and I just think it's awesome. So we're making a road trip of it. It's going to be uh, just going to be awesome. So we're really looking forward to it. All right. Let's see. See. Meredith wants to know where I'm traveling for vacation. Oh my gosh, like all over the place. So we leave tomorrow from Tennessee and then we're going to, I guess, go through Texas up to Arizona. Then from Arizona, we're going to go still in Arizona, but we're going to go to the Grand Canyon. Then from there, we're going to a place called Moab in Utah. And then we're going to, I think Idaho Falls is the next stop via Salt Lake City. And then we go through Wyoming and then we go to Colorado and then we go to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and then we'll, then we'll head home. So yeah, it's going to be a long, long trip where, I mean, gosh, Wednesday to Thursday. So um, like almost two full weeks, but I'm going to be um, still working a little bit. I'm not going to be, I won't be doing the live, so I won't be able to do that, but we're going to try to go live doing some other things that you guys might be interested in. So I'm taking my foodie with me. Um, so um, I'm excited about it. Okay. Hi, Robin. Hi, Sharon. I'm sorry that if I'm, i am just been running around. We've been packing uh, today and everything. So it's just, I've just been a little busy. Hi, Norma. Hi, Raven. 
Thank you, John. I just had it done today. So she highlighted it a little bit. He said he likes my hair. I like it down too, but it's a pain to do. So I don't do it very often. Um, hi, Carolyn. Hi, Elsie. Hi, Deb. Hi, Tom. Hi, Elaine. You know, I'm not seeing anybody on from Facebook, which is kind of interesting. Um, I, I see everybody from YouTube. So I don't know what's going on over there on Facebook, but I hope they're not I hope they're not trying to, so I might have to inspect that a little bit, see what's going on there. Um, okay. Uh, Tony says, I'm not a good cook, but I have learned so much from your videos. I have a question. I watched your calzone video, but I didn't see any information on the oven temp and how long to cook it. Um, the calzones were air fryer calzones and the recipes on my website. So, um, I don't remember off the top of my head. I mean, I can look it up. I'll post the link in the chat here. Just pull that up. Let's see. Let me get this link here. Sorry. And let me see. I can go to the recipe and find out. I think I go at 400, but I don't remember. Okay, wrapping. Yeah, 400 for eight to 12 minutes um, in the air fryer. And I will post this here. And I'm gonna run over to YouTube, I mean, uh, Facebook real quick and find out what is going on, why I don't have anybody commenting from Facebook. So let me see. It should have posted. Yeah. Well, people are in. I see. Oh, Deb's on. Okay. People are okay. Um, now, let me see if I go back over here if I'm seeing those. I'm not seeing the Facebook comment. Oh, there, Deb. Okay. Okay, great. I am seeing Facebook comments now. Okay. All right. Hi, Randy. How are you? All right. Um, all right, next question. Which foodie do I have? Oh my gosh, I pretty much have all of them. Um, I have the Ninja Foodie Pressure Cooker and Air Crisper, and I've got all the models because that's like my main focus on my website. And I did a course for it, so I needed to really have all the different types um, of functions and everything. So I pretty much have all of them, all the sizes and everything. Um, and then I have a Ninja Foodie oven, which I don't do too many videos with, but I do use it a lot. I like it. I use it a lot for dehydration purposes. It's the big XL oven. Um, and oh my gosh, like the grill, the, the little flip oven. I have the Ninja Creamy, but I can't figure out how to use it correctly. My recipes aren't turning out, so I don't use it too much. Um, and I'm sure I miss one, the grill. I even have the wood fire smoked grill, which I wasn't planning on getting, but um, I got a really good deal on it. And um, let me tell you, I really like it. Okay. Um, this is a great question, Keely. When did I start YouTube and how did you work up the confidence and courage to do it? Um, I started YouTube in, I guess, 2018. So right when I was starting with Ninja Foodie and I did it because I used to go live when we lived in Maryland. I used to go live and I used to do Tasty Tuesday from my home. Um, and I was, I got used to doing live videos that way. And I'll tell you, it's really, it's really kind of, a, a, I guess, an interesting story story. I don't know if it's unique. I, I don't think it's unique. I think uh, a lot of people feel this way, but I what it, I'm like petrified of being in front of people like public speaking and things like that, or even being around a bunch of people, not petrified. That's, that, that's not the right word, but like real nervous. I'm not confident at all, unless I'm doing one or two things being a nurse, which I was for uh, 28 years and cooking, like, because it's my passion, it's everything to me, both of those things. Um, it just was easy. I, I feel confident when I'm cooking and I felt confident when I was a nurse too and other areas of my life, I'm not. So, um, 
But for everybody else who really feels like they they want to maybe start a YouTube channel or start something like that and they don't think they have the confidence, do things that you love to do. So make recipes that you love to make and it gets easier and easier and easier. And like Jeff says, how do you talk to cameras? Like, you know, I don't feel like I'm talking to a camera even now. I feel like I'm talking to you guys and that you're we're all together. You know, I've, I've always felt a connection even even though we're not physically in the same space and um, it just makes it easy. It's like being around a bunch of friends and I love it. I love every minute of it. Um, Connie says, um, hope the bad weather passed before y'all leave. I hope so too. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, oh, Kathy. Awesome. So she's in Utah and Moab is beautiful. We have heard that and we've never been, so we're going to go. It's, it's kind of off season, but I don't mind that. I don't mind going places off season, although it's going to be really cold. All right. Um, Crystal, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Crystal says, I hope you have a great vacation. I know it will be hard for you to leave your dogs. After the way they've been acting? Uh, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, they've been on my last nerve. No, just joking. Well, they have been on my last nerve, but um, that's because they know we're getting ready to go. And so they get a little hyperactive and they're like, wait a minute, are we going? Are we allowed to go? Um, but they go to their vets for boarding. They love it there. Like they never want to leave and they're they don't even care when we come and pick them up. It's just crazy. They love it there. So, um, Oh, and Carolyn. Yes. Yeah, Santa Fe. I cannot wait to eat some good food. Like I've already mapped out a few restaurants and stuff that I want to go to. Um, Oh, Annie. Okay. Yeah. Annie says, uh, the day that she was at the Grand Canyon, a couple fell off. We will be very careful. Um, Jeff used to do helicopter tours at the Grand Canyon, so he's been there a million times. I've been there twice, um, but we've never been together, so it's going to be fun. All right, let's keep going down here. Um, and Frances uh, wanted me to know that she loves her KitchenAid. I love my KitchenAid too. I don't, I don't, I'll tell you, that, like, that's probably one of the appliances that is worth every dime they charge and they're expensive. Uh, and I, I hope they're still made as well. But I have my my first KitchenAid that I ever purchased. Um, I still have it and it still works great. And it is, I mean, it's at least 20 years old and it works great. Um, they just, they really last a long time. Hi, love pugs. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Let's see. Um Michelle, we are driving. We're driving. We have an SUV and we're driving. And so we packed the car today. I'm like a pack of packaholic, I guess. Um, like, I, I don't know. It's, well, we have to pack for all these different seasons, you know, like we don't know what it's going to be like. So, um, and we have to pivot too. Like, we don't know what the weather might be. We might have to pivot, change, but it's okay. It's all right. We've got a few things that we really want to get to. But other than that, it is what it is. Hey, Christine. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, my beautiful friend. Oh, I know I miss you. We need to catch up. We do need to catch up. Christine is a nurse um, and we've worked together and she's been my boss. She's uh, just awesome. Love her. Um, Annie, I did not see your question, honey. So can you, um, can you post it again for me? And I'll, I, I can try to go back and, and find it, but I'm kind of way down here now. Um, so it'd be easier if you just um, repost it, if you don't mind. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Hey, Lynn. That's awesome. Um, I was just talking to somebody about uh, making breads and doughs and things. And it's like one of the things I absolutely love to do. And um, I shouldn't eat it that much, but I love to make them. And I'm, I'm, just excited to explore that. I want to do a sourdough starter. So I want to do some videos on getting a sourdough starter started because it's easy. It's just a little time consuming. You know, you got to set aside your times to feed your starter um, and then start making some recipes with it. Um, 
Colleen, funny you say that about taking your foodie when you travel. I always do. I take a foodie. and Some I can't do without kitchen tools, my ninja storm and spices that I think I'll want to use. Yeah, I I do too on a road trip. Obviously not flying, but um, on a road trip. Yeah, I usually do too. I always pack my knife and there's just a few like utensils that you know you're not going to be able to find. Um, and so I'll pack those. I have a little, I have a little kitchen go bag. <laughs> um all right. Oh, Annie said her dog was at the groomers and she kept looking for him, but I bet he came back looking wonderful. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to keep going. All right, Heather, let's talk about this. So I need help organizing my spices. Any ideas you can give me, please? Well, you know, organization is one of those things that what works for me might not work for you. Um, so really finding out, and I just, um, there's somebody, I cannot remember her name, um, but it's called Organized 31 is her website. And she was just on a podcast talking about this and I thought it was so enlightening. So I'm gonna share, these are her words, not my mind, but what I took away from it. And that is you have to ask yourself some questions when you're organizing. Are you little picture or big picture? You know, um, are you, um, like motivated by colors or, uh, the alphabet? Like what, what how would you want to find your spices? Like there are people that will put all their baking spices in one area. Um, that's your cinnamon, your nutmeg, you know, baking powder, things like that all in one area. And then there's some that will alphabetize them. Personally, I have this memory that I just know where I put it. So I don't have any real organization. Like I do have some things in the back. I don't know if you can see them, but they're spices and they're on the wall. But, you know, that's my test kitchen and that I keep them so I can just grab them and hopefully put them back because half the time I don't put them back. And then I'm looking all over the place for them. But I'm very like, like visual. I want to see everything. So the way that I organize them is by size of spice containers. So that I know in my mind that my cumin comes in a big spice jar. So, or big spice thing. So that goes in the back of the cabinet and I can just kind of see it poking up. And then I have the smaller ones in front. That's the way I do it. Jeff would alphabetize them. That's how he would do it. Some people would put powders and um, and and leaves separated, you know, like thyme leaves versus thyme powders, you know, that kind of thing. So really, it's organization is all about finding what works for you because there's no one one size fits all when it comes to that. So I don't know if I gave any help at all, but that's uh, that's how I think about it, and that's how um, I the podcast that I listen to. Was, she was talking about, I was like, yeah, that's great. Um, okay. Tony, this is a good question. So is an air fryer comparable to an oven? Thanks. I'm trying to figure out how to cook as well. Okay. So an air fryer is very similar to an oven in the way that you are cooking with dry heat in a dry cooking environment, unless you have a steam oven. We, I know they're out there, but you know, traditional wall ovens or under your stove ovens are dry heat. Um, and so is an air fryer. The difference between an air fryer and a uh, oven is mostly the size. Cause even in an oven, you can get, um, you know, a convection oven that, that has a fan and circulates air around, but in an air fryer, they are smaller. So it's more concentrated heat and air circulating around your food, which does the crisping part of it. It also takes less time a lot of times to use an air fryer. And it's strictly because of the space. It's not because of anything magical. So those are the differences. Usually with an air fryer, um, you'll decrease your temperature. So if you're doing an oven recipe and it calls for 400, then you might want to go to 350 or 375 in your air fryer and also check um, because it's probably going to be done quicker. Um. Hi, Krabby McCrabface. I just love that. Um, one of your newest subs, thinking of questions, stay tuned. All right. Well, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, hi, Ursula. How are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Um, let's see. Okay. Ben, I'm glad you enjoyed the beef stew. 
Um, oh, you know, Colleen, let's talk about that. So Colleen says, I've been proofing a lot of bread in my foodie the last few weeks. So I think this is an interesting subject. Like you can proof the bread in the Ninja Foodie and it works great, right? It takes half the time, especially, it depends on which model you have, but you can use the dehydration function on the older models and you can use the proofing function on the newer models. And there's definitely some pros and cons to both, but I personally like the proofing function on the one lid models. However, what you don't get is the flavor development. So anytime you kind of hurry yeast along, you lose some flavor. So just so you know that it's a trade-off, but you can get a loaf of bread, you know, baked up fairly quickly um, versus having it rise on the counter or even doing a slow proof in the refrigerator, which I've done. Um, oh, you know, that's a really good idea. Um, I don't know if Valentine's Day is a tasty Tuesday. Let me look. Uh, let's see. Um, so Tasty Tuesday for the 31st is canceled. It is Valentine's Day. So yes, I think we should do. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. So I'll put together a little menu. I think I will. I'll actually have something planned out. Maybe I'll make Jeff cook. Oh. <gasps> Maybe I'll have him do it, you know, Valentine's Day. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'll get the ingredients. I'll plan the menu. I hope he's not watching. <laughs> um, all right. Jane says, if I could have only one Ninja product, what would it be? Every time you turn around, there's another product launch. I know, I know. Um, I The Ninja Foodie pressure cooker and air crisper, hands down, because it does everything. You know, um, it does everything. So yeah, hands down, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that for the world. If mine broke, I would go get another one. I absolutely love it. I mean, you could do so many things in it. So, um, that would be my choice. Uh, other people would say the grill because that's the style of cooking that they do. So if you, if that, you know, a lot of it depends on the best appliance for you is based on what you cook what you like to cook, but I like to do a lot of different things. So I like to go from a moist cooking environment, which would be pressure cooking to a dry cooking environment, which is air frying. Um, so yeah, for me, definitely. Um, okay. This is a good question. Sorry. My phone's blowing up. Um, Deb says I stuff manicotti with meat. Can I cook them in the Ninja foodie and how? Yes, you can. Okay. So I have a I have a, a lasagna recipe and I did it pot and pot. That's kind of what I would suggest, um, unless you're okay with a more liquidy sauce with your manicotti. But I would probably do pot and pot and put some. You want some thin liquid, so whether or not you use water or a beef stock or whatever, just know if you use beef stock, your your noodles are going to turn dark, so it might look weird. But um, water's fine. You can put a little bit of tomato sauce into it too, just not too much because that those noodles need to absorb that thin liquid so that they cook correctly. And then put your water in the bottom. And, and it depends on how deep it is and how much of it it is. Um, but I, I would think probably, gosh, I can't remember my lasagna recipe. I, I would think 20 to 30 minutes, not a pressure cook. I wish I could remember. Well, I guess I can look it up, right? We've got the internet. Let me look it up. Let's see. I'm on my website anyway. Um, let me see what I did with my lasagna. Um, lasagna, double decker. And let's see how long I pressure cooked. I think I pressure cooked for 35 minutes. So there you go. Getting down here. Okay. No, I pressure cooked for 20 minutes and then I natural released for five and then I air crisped on 400 to get the, the cheese brown on top. So you could, you could probably go 20, maybe 25 minutes for the manicotti um, would be my suggestion. All right. Let's see. Um, Oh, I'm going to throw that up there. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. I, um, I liked nursing. Yeah. I think I was pretty good. Um, 
Happy friend anniversary, John. <laughs> I can't believe I saw your email. I haven't had a chance to respond to it because I like to sit down and really take my time. Um, and I can't believe it's been a year already. It's just been amazing. You've just been such a good friend to me. Um, all right, let me see here. We've got a chocolate covered cherry recipe. On your chocolate, oh, I could do fondue. <laughs> That's how my brain works. I could do fondue. I haven't done fondue. Oh, I could do fondue for um, Valentine's Day. Ooh, okay. On your chocolate covered cherry recipe, how long can I wait before using the fondant around the cherry? Is three days too long? You mean to make up the fondant ahead of time and then wrap it around the cherries? If that's what you're talking about, the fondant will last a long time mainly sugar, but you want to make sure it's in a sealed container or in a plastic bag with most of the air squeezed out because air is going to be its enemy. Okay. It's going to dry it out too much. Um, but yeah, you can make fun in ahead of time and then just pop it into the refrigerator. And then you want to bring it out about an hour before you're going to use it so that it softens up some. Um, if you're talking about once you wrap the chocolate, once you wrap the fondant around the cherry, you want to dip them right away. So just in case that was your question. Um, all right. What's your go-to accessory for the ninja? That is a good question. Tongs? <laughs> I don't know. Would you consider this an accessory? I don't know. Um, tongs, I think, are like crucial to have a nice pair of tongs that don't have too much of a tension. You know, you got to get them so that they're right for you or they're, um, you know, they can actually be painful to use. Um, I would, I would have to say my eight inch fat daddy -o pan and my six inch fat daddy -o pan, those two pans, um, you can do all kinds of stacked, uh, food in them. And I, I just, I love them. So that would probably be it. I can't, I haven't been using a whole lot of accessories. When I first got the Ninja Foodie, I was all in. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to bake all these cakes. I'm going to do all these things. And I got all these accessories and truth be told, I haven't really used them much lately. I, I am going to start doing, I, I want to do some, a few desserts. Um, in fact, I have a recipe for creme brulee coming out next Sunday, I think the seventh, I think it's, I don't know what day it is. Um, but anyway, it's coming out before Valentine's day, um, as a dessert. And I, um, I use those little canning jars for that. And I really liked it. Um, okay. Cindy, the other day, your video of unboxing your first foodie came up. So funny to see your reaction to this new appliance. Yeah. Gosh. And that was what, four years ago. Crazy. Um, Brittany, this is a guy, I, I go slow through these comments because I try to get to them all. It's so funny. I have no issues talking, doing things in front of people, but I seriously, seriously struggle with criticism or rude people. You have such a kind temperament. I have no idea how you do it. Um, every once in a while, my inner snark comes out. Uh, it does. I, I'm not going to lie. People can really get on your nerves with their negativity and their know-it-allism and all those other problems that we have on social media with judgments. And um, I mean, like if I hear one more person, like tell me I'm fat, it's like, okay, I've got a scale and I've got a mirror. I don't need you to keep telling me this. <laughs> um, it's hard. You have to ignore it and it gets easier. But not every day. It's not easy every day. That's one of the downsides. I have stopped checking comments very much on YouTube. Oh, sorry. That was my dog because she hears this. Um, I, I had to because people on YouTube are ruthless, man. No offense to the people that are here. You guys are not. Um, but you can only take so much of it. So anyway, um, Kaylee says, you do a great job. Keep up the work. I love cooking too and baking. You've given me more confidence with my Ninja Foodie. I am in healthcare and I'm a mom. Best job to have. Absolutely. That's one job I never had. I never had children, but I do love kids. Um, Katrina, I just answered that one. So I'm going to skip by it. My go-to would be uh, an eight inch pan, eight inch by two inch and a six inch by two inch. Now in Australia, I don't think you can get the fat daddios, but you can get something like it. 
Um, okay, Phyllis wants to know a little bit more about the wood pellet grill. So it's just like the indoor grill, except it's an outdoor grill and smoker. It has all the functions of the, the um, indoor grill. So it can grill, it can... Um, I just lost it. It can bake, it can roast, it can air fry, it can do all those things. But it also is a pellet smoker and it's very efficient. So I owned a barbecue restaurant. So I know barbecue and I know smoking meat. And I did it in a big five foot rotisserie smoker. Like you couldn't beat it. It was delicious. And it was wood fired. And I just, it was just amazing. Um, so I've been really on the fence about getting a pellet smoker just because I was like, oh, is it going to taste the same? Is it going to work the same? But like I said, I got a good deal on this and it's my only pellet smoker that I've ever had, but it's so fast because it's a small space. So it goes back to large oven, air fryer, you know, larger space, smaller space, food cooks more, uh, more efficiently in a smaller space because there's more direct heat. Heat is what's, you know, cooking the food. And that's the same in the smoker. So I found like, let's say a rack of ribs might take four or five hours on a smoker on a low and slow. It's only going to take about two hours on the wood fire grill. Now you can't do like 15 racks of ribs. You know, you can only do probably two, maybe one and a half to two. Um, cooking with CJ and Grilling Montana are two YouTube channels that do a lot with the smoker. I haven't because obviously it's outdoors and I'm indoors. Our setup is indoors, but I think I'm going to do something a little bit with it um, come springtime when it's a little bit nicer and we can set some outdoor uh, lights and stuff up and things like that. But I really like it. Now, I don't like the pellets that they send. I haven't found any flavors of the, the Ninja pellets. They say you can only use the Ninja pellets in there. That's not true. I mean, whatever. It works fine with any pellets. And I get cherry. I like I like cherry and apple the best. Those are my favorite. Um, the only thing that I've noticed with the uh, pellet with this pellet smoker, the Ninja wood fire is there's just this tiny bit of acrid is really the only word I can come up with taste. And it's, it's very, very mild. So it doesn't off put me from cooking anything on it, but I am trying to figure out how to get rid of that because I think that it, it, that would be better if it was not there. Just a little bitter almost. Um, so uh, CJ had a good suggestion because I was talking to him about it and he said, um, cut the smoke time back. So you, the cook time can be the same, but cook, but, but do less of the smoke and see if that, um, doesn't help. So I think I'm going to try that. All right, Robin, make sure you check out Potash Road in Moab and check out the, okay. And the pictographs, it's incredible. Petroglyphs and pictographs. It's incredible. I will. I will look that up. I'm going to screenshot that right now so I can um, go back to that later. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, oh, Kathy, that's awesome. And yes, living in Arizona and not heating up the whole kitchen. I can imagine that that is lovely. Um, Thank you, Mary Ellen. I appreciate that. I love Cape Cod. We used to go there in the summer for a week all the time. And then I was a visiting nurse for a little bit. And I actually worked in Rhode Island for three months. I loved it. I, I love that area. Um, all right. Let's see. Um Okay. I've got a question here. So Maria, I just bought an eight quart Ninja foodie with smart lid. I have the smaller version for a year. Love it. I'm going to try your stuffed peppers in the large foodie. How many would you say of stuffed peppers would I fit in the eight quart? I'm in Florida. You're going to be only be able to fit the same amount because it's the same diameter. I mean, you could technically stack them. Uh, my recipe is a steamed recipe. So I don't know if you're doing that or if you're going to do um, a, oh, you did say you're going to use my stuffed peppers. So steaming in the one lid is a little different and I'm still working out like the little nuances by, by, you know, using the steam function. Um, and I find things take longer and I, it's because of the lid. It's because the, the vents and how the steam is vented. It doesn't trap in as much heat 
as the Ninja Foodi 2 lid. So you might find that you need to add a little bit more water because what I do is I cook the rice and the uh, ground beef and stuff in the bottom of the pot while I'm steaming the peppers because otherwise the peppers turn to mush and I wasn't happy with the recipe. So that's how I did it and it worked out beautifully for me. But you might need to add a little bit more water. I would say probably a half of a cup um, of water or, or thin liquid, whatever I call for in the recipe. Um, and then you may have to cook a little bit longer. Not too much longer, but two to three minutes maybe. But with steam, you can check on it, you know, and make sure it's done uh, correctly. Um, oh, Ben, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you like the beef stew. That's a popular recipe of mine. All right, let's see. I'm still learning pressure cooking. Thank you so much for your help. My ninja is used every day since Christmas week. Mostly your recipes. Not one recipe went wrong or just like that is amazing. Thank you. That means the world to me. I, I'll tell you, even now, four years later, and I've gotten better at writing recipes, um, you know, because anytime we do things over and over, we get better at them. I've gotten better at writing recipes, but every single time I hit publish, my stomach drops. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, is anybody going to like this? Or is it going to work for everybody? You know, like it's, I, and I just wait, like, you know, wait for people to say, oh, I made it. It worked out. I'm like, Phew. thank you. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Okay. John, uh, Annie's going to repost. I still haven't gotten down there. I'm still at 7.15. I don't even know what time it is, but I'm reading comments from 7.15, just so you guys know. Um, so, um, hey, Max, thanks for tuning in. Life is super busy right now. Caretaking. Yes. Being a caretaker is extremely busy. Oh, Annie. Yes. You know what? I did see that shoot by and I forgot to answer it. I'm sorry. Um, I always pack brown sugar. Should I? Yeah. Most of the time. Um, if, if a recipe, I, this is how I would do it anyway. Um, I, I'm trying to get better at actually saying packed brown sugar, but if a recipe doesn't state, I would assume it's packed. Um, I would think if it's, if it's going to be like loosely packed or something like that, that the recipe creator would write that in. I really believe that because I think we, we always pack brown sugar. That's just like, we just always do. Um, now that I, I'm, I'm only one recipe developer though. There's tons out there. Maybe they think differently, but I would think that, I mean, technically if you're good at what you do, which I apparently am not because I forget to do this all the time, but if, um, you know, we should write brown sugar, one cup packed, we should write that. Um, but I, I forget because I assume, right. And that's the worst thing I could do, but I do. Um, so I would assume it was packed because it, that's normally how it is. All right. Let's see. Um, the first Ninja product I bought is the Ninja Master Prep Blender and the Chopper Combo. Got it in 2009. It's still working perfectly. That's awesome. That's great. Um, that's a long, that's a long shelf life for those long, long um, lifespan. Um, let's see. Wayne, do I have a recipe for fresh pasta dough? No. Oh, that's another idea for Tasty Tuesday. Let's make homemade pasta. Let's make homemade ravioli and a quick, a quick, I know what I'm going to do. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I'm going to have Jeff cook it though. I'll help him with the pasta dough. Um, so tune in on next, not next Tuesday, but tune in on Valentine's day. Of course you guys are probably going to be doing things more exciting than hanging out with me, but, um, check it out maybe after the fact. And, uh, You'll see us make pasta dough, but I don't have a recipe on my website, but that is something that I do want to do. So I think it's in, in the works. Um, okay. Thanks, Jolene. I appreciate that. Hit the thumbs up, show the love. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, Michelle. Okay. Um, so Jeff and I have been married since 2008, right? Yes. Um, we had a whirlwind romance. Um, Jeff was married for 20 years prior to that. I had never been married. I was 38. 
um, when we got married and we met on match.com, believe it or not, I was working at my assisted living and was so busy all the time. And I've always been very career driven and, you know, just wasn't going anywhere to meet anybody. And I thought, well, I'll try this one more time because I had met a lot of duds. Um, and I don't know, we just connected immediately. We became just best friends and we met in May, engaged in July married in October, all of the same year. So it's was pretty cool. 2008. Yeah. 2008. Yep. Um, Hillary would love some one pot keto meals. Um, yeah, Jeff has been eating keto. Keto meals aren't really for me. They're not, um, one potters. Uh, just because the concentration is going to be on your protein and the and you're not going to have the rice and the pasta and things like that. So it's a little trickier to do one pot keto meals. Um, but steaming might be a good one. So I'll just give that some thought. I will give that some thought because Jeff eats low carb all the time. I, I try, but I don't so much. Um, oh, awesome, Lisa. So she made the Salisbury steak recipe and used gluten-free oats instead of the panko. It was so good. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad. Um, okay. Let's go. Hey, CJ. He's probably not still on because it's been so, it's been, so, <laughs> it's been forever since those comments came in. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So that's another, so this is about the spices I'm assuming. So Deborah says she set aside a large drawer by my stove and have them organized by types of cooking, Italian, Mexican soups. Oh, that's a, see, that's another way to think about it. Um, that personally wouldn't work for me, but, um, I mean, I have an entire, I mean, I couldn't even fit my spices in a drawer. Um, but I wouldn't think of them in, in, types of cooking. That's so that's an interesting way to think about it. And if that works, that's awesome. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, Kath. Thanks so much. So organized 31 and her name is Susan. Yes. Susan. That is her name. Um, Brian says his comments are turned off on YouTube. I don't want to do that because there are so many people who, I mean, I try to look at them. I'm, when I say I haven't looked at them in a while, I try to like briefly look through them, especially when a recipe first goes out. So I can see if I have any questions about the recipe and stuff. I don't want to turn them off. I know other, um, other people have though, because of the nastiness, I just try to go in like in the right space in my head and either ignore or hit delete. You know, I mean, I'm not going to delete every, comment that I don't like or anything like that. I'm not going to do that. Um, but just try to move past them, you know, just not, don't give them the time of the day. Um, I mean, people will argue with me about, I mean, it's my recipe. I made it the way I wanted to. You don't like it, make your own. I don't, you know, it's not a big deal. Like it's okay, but they will argue with me. I mean, I try to be really nice and then they come back, but it's not this because you didn't use this. You know what? No, we're not doing that. Just you do, you do your cooking the way you want to do it. And I'll do it the way I'm going to do it. And that's that. If you don't like it, it's perfectly fine with me. Um, thank you so much, Tony. I hope we have a great vacation. Um, and we definitely will have fun. Jeff and I always have fun, whether we're on vacation, whether we're home, we always have fun. Um, oh, that's a good idea. A chocolate covered strawberry drink. For Valentine's Day, I should, I should, I need to um, do that beforehand, right? Um, um, I think broasting, uh, Colleen. So Colleen's question, uh, um, or statement question is: I wish there was a way to pressure air fry. Some call it broasting. I think a combination of pressure and air frying. Um, I thought broasting. I thought that was actually like pressure cooking with oil, but you know what? I might be wrong because I think I saw somebody do it on TV and there aren't any like home uh, appliances that you can pressure cook with oil. Uh, so maybe I'm wrong. I don't, 
I don't know how, I mean, except for what the ninja calls, um, what do they call that? What do they call that? Pressure crisp? They call, no. They have a term for that, pressure cooking and then air frying, and they have a term for it. I, I can't remember it. I don't remember what it's called. Oh my gosh, how can I not remember this? Well, you guys will tell me in the comments what it's called. Is it, is it ninja foodieing? No. Pressure crisp? No. I cannot believe I can't remember that. All right. Let's see. Oh, Kathy, that's awesome. You're getting new doors in her house and I had to show the ninja devices to the person who came to measure. And I told him about how much I've learned from you. That is so awesome. I have a friend, Amber, who uh, I met through doing this. So, um, you know, she, she had some questions and she started uh, messaging me the questions and we just kind of hit it off and, and have been friends ever since. And um, she, she's does uh, home appraisals and she says all the time she's talking about cooking food and talking about the foodie and me and, and all this stuff and showing her pictures and everything. I think it's awesome. Um, all right, Brittany, I'm sure you've already said good night or, uh, you're yeah. So, um, I'm sure you're not still in the chat, but anyway, uh, we will see you in a few days. Looking forward to it. All right, let's see. Um, Oh, and Tracy bought the, the grill grate for the pressure cooker based on your recommendation. Hope to make the Asian steak. I love the grill grate. I, again, that's another thing I haven't done a lot of recipes with lately. Um, I need to start thinking about those things because I know people have bought them and then I, I haven't done any more recipes, but I love the grill grate. I really do. Um, okay. Yeah. So somebody asked, uh, again, keep in mind if you're watching uh, now live or you're watching the replay that these questions come in and, and I'm very behind. Um, so they come in a lot faster than I can answer them or talk about them. Mostly because I talk too much, but anyway, that's another full story. Um, a nice set of silicone utensils to prevent scratches. That would be a, a good accessory too. That's going back to that question. Yeah. Um, okay. So is a convection toaster oven interchangeable with an air fryer? That is a good question. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm picturing it in my mind. I will tell you that, let's say the flip is, please don't, please don't. Um, the flip, like, I, I know what you mean by a toaster oven. Um, and I'm, so an average size toaster oven, the flip, it is not really the same. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly why, whether it's the bulbs, I think. So the heating element, so the heating element in these ovens, um, a lot of times are like these little strip lights and I don't think they get, they get really hot enough. I mean, even though obviously the oven gets up to temperature, I don't know. It's just not the same. Um, but, uh, an, if you had a small oven, that I get, I don't know. I think I'm just talking in circles. Um, they're not the same, but probably a little closer than a large, you know, regular size, if that helps, but they're not, they're not the same. There's something different. And I never wanted an air fryer. Like, um, I never wanted a, really a pressure cooker. I didn't even slow cook. Like I was all stove oven, you know, those kind of things that, that was what I did. Um, but I lost. My, oh, I thought an air fryer. Oh my gosh, how silly! I just put on convection in my in my oven, and it wasn't until I got the Ninja Foodie that was my first air fryer that I was like, "Whoa, this is so different!" Oh my gosh, um, and it works so much better. The air fryers do. If you have a good one, I mean, I you know, I'm sure there's some low wattage and some not so effective air fryers out there, but the Ninja products they have a good air frying function, I think, except for the ovens, uh, the Ninja ovens. I don't think they do well as an air fryer. Um, which is unfortunate because, you know, you can, the XL oven is a nice big space, but because it's a nice big space, you can of course fit more quantity, but it's not going to cook as well. It's not going to get as crispy. So, um, it's just, just a tad, you know, just a tad different. Um, let's see. Okay. So any chance of you making a Mexican street corn dip? I actually did Mexican street corn. 
I had it all tested out um, this past summer, like an actual, you know, the, an actual street corn. Um, but then I was like, then I was, what I was going to do is cut it off. So I was going to do like an off the cob street corn. So I did it in a skillet. Okay. Had it all planned out. Then I couldn't find any fresh corn. Couldn't find any good corn. Um, so I have to wait now until, you know, corn season is back around. But I think Mexican street corn dip would be amazing. Uh, but the quality of the corn really makes a difference. It really does. So um, I would wait until I could get fresh corn. Hi there. How are you? Joni. Gosh, it's been a long time, sweetheart. Um, I think I saw you, though, recently in a comment or something. Um, but anyway, I hope you're doing okay. And thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm just going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. Um, okay. Somebody wants um, a large bread loaf recipe. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. Um, I'm going to be working on some bread recipes. So, um, Oh, well, Crystal, it, the feeling is, is, it goes both ways. You're always asking about how I am and you're always concerned for everybody. And, and I just think that you're lovely and I appreciate that you tune in and, you know, you share a little bit of your time with me. And so I'm happy to share mine with you, of course. Um, all right, let's see. Okay. This is another question here. Can I use the probe on pork country ribs? Absolutely. You can. Um, I'm assuming like, uh, yes, you can pressure cook and then crisp them. You don't really need to use the probe, but you can, but, um, keep, well, well the pork country ribs, you're not going to get into too much trouble with leaner meats. You will, but pork country ribs, you'll be fine, but you want to set them. It depends on how you want to eat them, but I would say you want to set your temperature up towards the 190, 200 range, um, for the pork country ribs. That way you're going to get all of that fat rendered out and they're going to be nice and tender for you. So I wouldn't just go to like 145. I don't think you're going to be happy with the results. Um, however, in the Ninja foodie, keep in mind, if you're using the probe and you're pressure cooking, this is on the one lid models. I think it's the OL 701 is the one that has that feature. Um, the, the your food will continue to cook after, it turns off. Even if you do an immediate release, you still got two or three or four minutes, depending on how much steam is in the pot. And it, your food's still cooking during that time. It doesn't magically stop cooking. So like if I wanted my temperature to be 200, I might set the probe temperature for about 180. Okay. Same with chicken. If I want my chicken to be 165, I'm going to set the probe temperature for like 140. I'm real careful with chicken because I don't like it um, to dry out. Uh, so that's, those would be my, um, my suggestions there. I think it's raining out. It's raining. It's, I think it's raining out. Is that right? I think it's raining outside. I don't know. Um, all right. So I am down at the end. Oh my gosh. With 10 minutes to go. Oh, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> um, all right. Well, what are we going to do for the next, last few minutes? Um, okay. And Connie, uh, um, be safe. Okay. She's got a storm hitting her. We have this rain now. Now I'm wondering, are we going to be driving in the rain tomorrow? Oh my gosh. I hope not. That's like the worst, you know, especially when you have a really long day, you just want it to be sunny, not rainy when you're driving all the way to Texas. Um, okay. Let's see. Have I done oxtails? Not officially for a recipe, but I have done them before, um, in the pressure cooker. They work out amazing. The, um, I mean, they just, they're just, they are amazing. So it's definitely a great way to cook them, but I haven't done an official recipe. Um, I don't buy them that often, but I do like them. I do like them. I wish I could, um, get up the nerve. I really want to, I really want to make, um, oh gosh, what is it called? Beef tongue. That's what I want to do. I really do, but I don't have the nerve. I've seen it in the store and I don't even really want to buy it, Ugh. but I want to, there's something else I made that was different for me. 
I don't remember what it was called though. Um, but I don't think I got a good, good batch of it because it, it didn't turn out very nice. Um, okay. I'm just rambling now. Let's see. Well, that's a good question. I bought a tub of miso. Can I freeze it? I don't see why not. Um, you know, I've never even seen miso to buy. I should buy some. <laughs> um, I, I don't see why you couldn't. I'm going to look it up, though. Can you freeze miso? I'm sure it's in it like a paste, right? Um, okay, so this is what it's... Oh, wait, wait a minute. Maybe you can't. Um, okay, so it says the best way to store miso considered a living food is to keep it in the refrigerator. If you would like to store it in a freezer, the temperature must stay higher. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. If that continues... Callie, Callie. Mm -mm, no, no. No, I'm going to have to mute myself. Shh. Please, please, please stop, stop, stop. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm, this is the storm. So I'm going to have to go because she's going to be driving me crazy. Um, so Callie, please stop. Okay, now this one's... Callie, Callie, sweetie, stop, please. Um, so this one says you can freeze me. So I'll have to do a little research. So I don't know the answer to that um, because I've never bought it. But um, I'm really so sorry about this. I know that has got to be so annoying for you guys to hear her barking. She annoys me. Like I said, I'm ready for her to go tomorrow. All of them. Um, okay. Uh, Carl wants to know, hi, Carl. Have I heard anything about an upgraded Speedy? I haven't, but I'm not in the know. I'm not in the know. I don't know when anything's coming out. I know when you guys know. In fact, usually I know after you know. So basically, um, I I learn about it because somebody posts on Facebook about it. So I don't know. You know, I'm sure they're going to do something, right? They always do. Um, have I done beef uh, burgundy? No, I haven't, but that's a great idea. I mean, I made it before. Um but I haven't done a, I haven't done a recipe before. That's a good idea. All right. And that's, that's funny. Beef tongue. I always said I didn't want to taste something that could taste me back. I have a funny a story about, was it, I think was it, it was beef tongue. And we ordered it at a Russian restaurant. And it wasn't prepared the way I thought it was going to be. Like, I don't know why. If you think about a tongue, right? I thought that the, it would be sliced. It was going to be like thinly sliced beef tongue, okay? Lots of vodka going on here at this dinner, right? Because, you know, otherwise I don't know that I would have even tried it. No, I would have. I've even tried frog legs. Have you seen that video? That was hysterical. But they don't slice it that way. Uh, I guess it's for the tender tenderness of it or whatever, they slice it this way. And so it's like you, it's like really thinly sliced, but you can see the taste buds. That was freaky. That was freaky to me, but, um, I enjoyed it. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of liver. Jeff didn't like it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good, but I'm still kind of, I don't know, a little nervous to, um, to make it myself, but I'll get it, get it a try. Michelle asks fried fish. How do you get the stink out of your house when you cook something stinky? Okay. So fish should not stink. <laughs> if fish stinks, there's something wrong with it. It should not stink. Um, that is no, number one. I mean, you, fish should hardly have any smell. I can't think of one fish. Well, I think salmon's kind of a little stronger smelling, but Honestly, I've never had that problem because if fish smells bad, I don't make it. I don't make a lot of fish, though. Mostly because I think a lot of times it's not as fresh as it should be. Um, but I don't know. I don't have an answer for that because I've never encountered the problem. Um, I, I mean, I I don't know. I guess I would open the windows or light a candle or something like that. Um, but I've never had, I've never run into that. Um all right. So Annie says, I need to learn to do chicken and rice at the same time. Now I do rice in the pot of the foodie and chicken in the grill. Well, um, I don't, re I don't remember if you have the steam and crisp, you know, the, the new one lid models, but I bet that would be a really good way to do rice and chicken. Um, 
because it's not going to be as harsh as pressure cooking and you will have that the steam time to start the rice you know, start that water boiling and then it won't be exposed directly to the dry heat, but it will continue to, to steam and, and finish absorbing the water to cook fully while the chicken cooks. I, I think that would work out great. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. I'm going to go down. All right. Well, you have the 601 Annie. So, um, so yeah, you should be able to do that with steam, steam crisp or steam bake. It depends on the chicken. Like, you know, is it a chicken breast? Is it a chicken thigh? Is it a chicken leg? Is it skin on? Is it boneless? Is it bone in? Is it, you know, boneless skin on? Is it, you know, there's just so many different ways, different types of cuts and the way that they're prepared. And that would determine your cook time and everything. But yeah, I think it definitely could be done. I mean, it would probably uh, require a little bit of trial and error. Just know when you're steaming, you're going to increase the amount of water that you're going to use in the rice because uh, it's different from pressure cooking. All right. Um, okay. Okay, so Michelle, I'm thinking about putting my Dutch oven on the grill. I'm assuming you're talking about the Ninja indoor grill <coughs> to fry in oil, though I might let blow something up. And you're not going to blow anything up, but the problem is <clears throat> I don't think it's going to get hot enough. Now, I don't know if you have, or if you might be talking about an outdoor grill, because I don't even see how the clearance would work too well. I mean, if you have the grill and griddle and you can put on the bottom, griddle plate. I mean, I guess technically it might work. Maybe you're talking about an outdoor grill. Um, you know, the, the issue with frying with oil is, I mean, number one, what kind of grill is it? You know, like, I don't think I would do a charcoal. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not a griller per se, but, um, keeping the oil at a constant temperature and grills can be difficult to do that. You know, especially outdoor grills can be difficult to do that with. So I'd be careful. I'd probably just stick with the stove. Um, Let's see. Okay. Um, okay. So Annie says boneless chicken breast. So yeah, I would think, I would think steaming, um, maybe 15 minutes. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Steam crisp. I mean, um, so you'll have that initial steam time and then or not crisp bake. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to go, but, um, uh, steam bake and, just check on your chicken breast, you know, and make sure that they're cooking correctly. Um, all right, let's see. Um, yes, Michelle, you can make breaded fish in the foodie. Um, I have an air fryer fish and chips recipe, so I've, I've definitely bre um, breaded it and made it. It's delicious. It's wonderful. So, all right, guys. Um, let's see. Yeah, John, that's what I was thinking. John's answering Annie too. Could you put the rice in the pot, um, pot and pot and still do steam bake? Well, pot and pot. Um, you mean like put the rice in the pot? I don't, I don't think that's going to work too well. I think you need to put the rice in the inner pot with the water, use the water. It will steam. The steam is a short burst of it. You know, it, it only lasts, you know, what? five minutes or so. Um, and then it, it switches over to the fan, which they're still steamy. So the chicken's still going to get, um, a little bit of moisture still. So I think, I think steam bake is a great option, but the rice in the inner pot with the water would be how I would do it. Um, All right, guys. Well, listen, I'm going to run so that um, my dog doesn't continue to bark at everyone. And I love you guys so much. And I can't wait. I'll be posting on Facebook mostly. I still have recipes coming out on YouTube. So we've already filmed them. They're already been done. And I'll be doing the live premieres on Sunday morning. So tune in for that. I don't, I think I'll be able to do it each Sunday morning. I think I've got that scheduled in, so that's fine. Um, and then um, we're going to try to go live a few times and see how it goes. We're taking um, some lights and things like that. So yeah, we're going to have a great time and I'll be posting all those pictures. I will see you guys not next week. Wow. Let me, let me go over this. I'm going to have to go over this. Let's see. Um, 
yeah, I will not be back until Tasty Tuesday on the 14th. So we will all catch up then for a live and we'll uh, do, a, I'll do a Tasty Tuesday Valentine's Day. All right. Bye-bye. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great week.